We are underway at Monza and Valentina Rossi goes wheel to wheel with Philippe Eng down to the first corner as Dan Harper decides to slot in behind Sheldon van der Linde. It's going to be a good start for van der Linde as they run through. Rossi's going to try and come around the outside into the red to Filio. He will battle for the lead. He slots in a second place as the cars work their way through. There's contact. There's all sorts of pandemonium. We weren't sure if it was going to be a tough start and it has been. One of the get speed Mercedes is out already. Yeah, it's going to be a full course yellow. Very, very shortly, and then no title followed by a safety car. Let's have a look again over, over the top of the cars and look in the background. It's all quite tightly congested anyway, but there are the two cars going off, the Mercedes and the Ferrari, and they bounce across each barrier. Oh, big accident at the Retafilio. Awesome. That, is, awesome. that is the Ivan Jacoma car, isn't it? The 24, it's Lidvala who is at the wheel, but that's, that's gone in hard. Let's have a look at what happened then at the first corner. Oh, contact! Oh, and that was a big hit. A hit actually at a marshal's post. Look at the damage to the front of the car. But more importantly, when the car turned sharp left, it was actually had a, a flag marshalling post. I saw the marshal diving as he saw the car coming to get foot to fall down. And that was a heavy impact. It starts to make more sense once everybody has served their regulation pit stop, in which you've got to change four tyres, by the way. You don't refuel, but you must change tyres. Oh, dear. What are they doing? What are they doing? Does somebody not tell them that you don't know the car in and then you completely destroy the pit stop of the Audi and everybody is just standing, waving their hands? Let's have a look. The car controller waves it in and he swings oh, it out of contact. That's why it's like that. Well, that was a bad release from the Audi. Yeah. Whoever waved that Audi clear made a judgment, a misjudgment, and all innocence to the Honda driver and Honda team. Sorry, guys, that was just a quick reaction to what we saw, but once we've had the truth, we know what the situation really was. Lap two, Contics on down, back on here. Look, the Audi being squeezed a little bit towards the grass on the outside line, but keeps on coming back. Side by side, diving into the corner, Lorenzo Patrese tries to go around the outside of that building and gets the Ferrari in the gravel and into the barriers, and off he goes. He's going to be able to keep it running and rejoin. So Thierry Van Moulin does get back onto the racetrack, but he's thrown away an absolute bucket load of places. We go through into turn six, three wide, all the way. Guys there will be trying to get a good exit onto the back straight because if you get a kilometre an hour more there, potentially you're going to get four or five cars down this long, long Mistral straight as you see cars running wide. Bit of contact car off, maybe even into the wall there on the left hand side. It's going to be hard to get out of that gravel trap no matter how far off they've gone. Oh, that's the bar well. Is that what, the bar well? That's the prime class leader, car number. <sighs> Number 78, so that car came with such high hopes. And I think you're about to see Schultzer get into it. That's where he tried to go for the inside line, and he just lost the back end, trying to squeeze it in. Yeah, the, the TV camera always flattens it out. But, uh, so we're going on board now with Rob Collard, the guy that we know is going off in the wall. So going around turn five here, you can see it all kicking off, looking for a space. We know everyone's three wide, but Schultzer in that yellow Mercedes there on our right. Rob will be pretty happy with his position. He's going to be trying to follow that other Lamborghini in front. Opens up to him. I think he's going to use a little bit too much curve on the left and also contact with the Mercedes. Oh. And it just bounces around, doesn't it? Just takes it round. The weight's on the front of the car. And the rear comes round. It's still a big old hit, that, into the wall. And again, right in the curves. And this is very busy indeed because that battle in front of Daniel Serra has come right onto his nose. So that has been a real benefit for the Ferrari driver, completely as predicted. I really love Daniel Serra's choice of positioning here. He's made this happen. He's really crafted it well. And no, no. They, there was contact, I think. No, I tell you, I just think a couple of quarters ago, I thought that Vince was going slowly. I think he picked up a puncture oh, going down through turns two towards three. He just couldn't get it to turn in or something has broken on that car after the contact, but he suddenly wasn't running the way he should have been. He'd fallen back onto the nose of Daniel Serra's Ferrari and then, and then through turns four and five. But this comes back to last year, doesn't it? We had some problems at the end of the race last year with people getting delaminations and punctures. It happened a lot towards the end of the race in particular. So it looks as though once again, it's going to cause his issues uh, multiple times. And Charles Vietz has stopped out on the circuit in sector one, yellow flags. We could even get a virtual safety car here. So here we go on board into turn three, turn in over the curb. All looks relatively normal at the moment for me. I'm trying to see his dash, to see him lit it up a little bit on traction there. There was contact on the right side, and look, you can see his frustration. I think it's something broke there and then. He's weaving left and right in the steering wheel. I would say the front right steering arm has been snapped. And you can see that Sarah's got the corner, but Vitz is still turning. It's the slightest touch. I think I was wrong. I don't think there's any contact there in that outboard shot. 
the inboard looked like it. It could have just been a super coincidental timing of the, the steering snapping. Let's have a look. I just didn't think there was contact there. No, there isn't. Unless it's his front right on the rear left of Sarah's car. It's only just... Full course yellow. We've got a car off on the right-hand circuit at turn seven. The Leipert Lamborghini sitting side on on the left rear wheels. That's the important bit in the gravel. So who spun first? It's the... Well, <laughs> Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Is that, well, the Lamborghini spinning. And the Mercedes end up on the other side of the track. Here it is, coming back. You know, there's the Lamborghini sitting sideways. And the Thieber car, oh, it caught the tail. So the Mercedes that caused the incident got away scot-free around the outside of the gravel trap. And really, unfortunately, for Yannick Mettler, it was about the 10th car pass, but unfortunately, the tail of the Lamborghini was in the track. It was then rotated to 180 degrees. There you can see the hit from the bottom of the hill. Great uh, direction there to pick up all of that. And uh, neither party was the guilty party in that equation. And then up towards the start of race three of the season in Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe, powered by AWS Sprint Cup. Fans in the grandstand are ready. Race director gives the instruction to change the lights to green. And Raffaele Marcello, blast away drama in the background. Big, big accident involving Spinelli. There's an Audi involved. We're going to go safety car straight away, I would have thought. Spinelli is off the racetrack. Others lit on the circuit. There's, I think Enrique Chavez is involved in that in the McLaren. Yeah, I think Chavez got hit. That spun him, turned him sharp left into the field. So we saw then the effect, the knock-on effect. So a number of cars went off in turn one. Other cars appeared to go off track, coming to the, the exit of turn three. So. We're still waiting to see what race director is going to do. Right, let's try and piece it together, John. Lights will change, we go racing, but... Two McLarens nose to tail us, the second of the two McLarens. Suddenly it seems to get tagged, yes, it did get tagged, and literally just spun the car around into the right, into the left, and that was the beginning of what we saw was confusion, if not... Uh, I mean, unbelievable. I mean, I can't imagine how all those cars that were spinning in the middle of the back got away with it. Something's happened to Alex Arca. He's lost two positions You're right. in the last oh, lap and a bit. Oh, oh bodywork. And... Kropinski had a dive up the inside of Alessio De Leda. Contact is the result. They both spin. And Kropinski tries to get the McLaren back in the right direction. De Leda, likewise. Goodness me. Wow. Well, but the McLaren's got damage, look. And certainly got damage. Grabbing. Suspension damage. The car is crabbing and there's the Ferrari. Oh, oh. That's for Silva, four wide, and into the lead of the class suddenly goes Frank Bird. The Audis get together, and off goes one of the Gold Cup Audis at high speed into the barriers and into the gravel. So that all kicked off coming out of turn six. This dive by Patrick Kaprinski up on the inside of Alessio De Leda. Contact made between the two. Bits of bodywork dislodged, and they both spin. Then up into position goes Alberto Di Folco. He gets hip and shouldered out by Nicola Marinangeli. That's what triggered it all. Di Folco on the inside, Cesar Gazzo on the outside. Di Folco didn't like that. He squeezes Marinangeli, who goes way wide. Look at the blue Mercedes from the back of the queue. All four wheels off the road. Track limits, <clears throat> and four abreast, but then something gives, and the Audis tangle. In fact, it was the two teammates touching, and Di Folco was the one that came off. I mean, first. just as vain, the car literally went from being on the racetrack, spat off the racetrack off to the right and nothing that Alberto de Falco could do about that. Just carrying too much speed, probably doing well in excess of 200 kilometers an hour when that contact took place. So this is de Falco's view. Wait for the nudge. Gets pincered. Yeah, he was simply the meat in that Audi sandwich. And of course, the incident down the bonnet of that Lamborghini actually is dislodged. Part on the right hand side, look at it. So, oh, up the inside, what a move. Will it work or not? At all, oh, and that has damaged big time to the Lamborghini. Game over for the contact. Iron Lakes. Game over for the Iron Lakes, without a shadow of a doubt. And now Christopher Meese is going to take full advantage of that up the inside of Marco Wittmann. This, this, is, this is another view of the same thing. So there's the dive done. And, and that's why, that's why the Lamborghini ran the curb, the back end snapped and it turned almost 90 degrees. In. So one has to say that really more down to Jordan Pepper than it was to Fitman. Fitman made the pass and a, a sort of wrong foot of the Lamborghini. Here's the onboard view of it up through the Schumacher S's. In both cars right on the limit of adhesion up the hill, up into turn 10. Watch what's going to happen with the BMW. Can't get it done here into turn 10. But Marco Fitman decides I'm going to make a lunge, I'm going to make a dive. Now, here I go. And all of a sudden, the two cars, there is contact. And then, snap, that snap overstayed. Nothing that can be done. 
And there's, 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 a, there's, there's a chance for Bella. He's going to go Bella. Round the outside. Round the outside. That's another song I forget at the end. But can't get it done. But on. Oh, how <laughs> close can you get? He's, he's, got, he's got the momentum off the final turn. Gets up alongside the Porsche. Side by side coming down into turn one. Who's got the advantage? The Porsche has got the advantage because it's on the inside. Feller can't get sufficiently far along to swoop through. So make the undercut. Make the undercut now and try and drive the Audi. And he may have to go the long way around turn two, which is what Feller is going to do. Frowning, what has he got left in the tank? Can he defend it to turn three? Yes, he's able to go in a little bit deeper. Compromises Feller as to the result. Feller's got a cut back now. Can he make the, again the exit of turn four to his advantage and the run down into turn five? The Porsche versus the Audi, nip and tuck, whichever way you look. Go the long way around turn five. Uh, but you've got to be careful because you run out of road if you do so. Then again, get yourself positioned right the outside of turn six, but you're certainly going to end up off the racetrack. Well, good job by both drivers. They gave each other a working group. A little bit of a love tap from Ricardo Feller to say, I'm going to take that position away. No, but Pratty says, no, you're not. <laughs> they have been side by side for about half the lap now, and Feller's still there alongside. Up still the hill, in, for it. Okay, into the Schumacher S's now. Surely this the is Porsche it for Feller. make it or not? No. Feller has finally got the job done. What and Pratty had to back out. He was on the wrong part of the racetrack. He couldn't defend. The Audi was sufficiently far alongside. He made the overtake, and that was a moment to savour. One corner to go. Mattia Drudy is on target to win race one of the weekend in Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe, powered by AWS Sprint Cup. Mattia Drudy, Ricardo Feller win at Hockenheim. Nicholas Barton, Fred for the second of Vermeulen dives out the inside of the last corner to go third. Fantastic, the Ferrari has done it. Vermeulen goes through and he's had to work hard, hard, hard for that. Absolutely, and what a courageous and opportunistic move by. Thierry Vermeulen to make that move and catch Dries van Thor. And look, you can see the response and reaction <laughs> from the faces in the WRT team. The start. But in the meantime, it was Lucas Legere with damage that we lost. We'll piece all the replays together. There he is, limping back. But that's the end of the race, and that's the end of any mathematical hope. And now look for the race lead. Marcello's off the road. He's all sideways. He's in the gravel. This could be a disaster for the championship. The championship leader off the road. Down, down, down down through the order he tumbles. Too ambitious, trying to go the wrong way, the, the long way around the outside, into turn 10 on Ricardo Feller, caught the damper part of the racetrack and just slid up, nothing he could do. And this was Marcello's mistake, John. Yes, indeed, on the outside of the racetrack, and you see all of a sudden, where is the grip? But it's non-existent, and he's sitting there as a passenger driving through the gravel, has got to go the long way, well, he's just going to drive back across the gravel, to get back, took the shortcut, made it work for him, and directly behind another, was that one of the BMWs also just catching the gravel yeah. at the exit of the corner? That was Nicholas Crutton, which is significant in gold. This is Marcello from on board. He was lucky not to get stuck in the gravel, wasn't he? I think maybe because the amount of rain that's fallen off and on over the day. Oh, look at the opposite lock. He knew, he knew before he got there he was in trouble. It was a big punt on his part, but the gravel, fortunately, is quite as uh, it's, it's more compacted with the rain. I think the Mercedes might get through. Let's see. Yes, he does, but he's on the wrong line for the next corner. Guven dives up the inside of the Audi as well. Martin's gone, but he's clear. He's away. And now Guven is up alongside Bastard. Side by side they run. The Porsche has the inside, so there's not a rocket map. Now up towards Sky for this time around on the outside. Oh, contact. contact. Off goes the Audi. The Porsche avoids him and runs wide of Bogdanowski's gate two places back. Absolutely, and I'm simply watch what was happening. And he's going to get back on track, but the Porsche may not. Now Trudy thinks he can get a run, but he's going down. He needs to get ahead of the Mercedes under braking. Can he make it work? The Mercedes has got the oh, and up the inside. And Trudy's been turned round, I think. No, it's Bogdanowski that's gone round. Oh, Team Bogdanowski hit, and he's hit again. Bodywork now, rear bodywork damage. That car will have to go into the pits. And that's it all over. But yeah, I think you're right. And I have a horrible feeling that the car that hit him was the silver class Audi of Patrese, which is run by the same team as Drudy's car. And that's going to get all sorts of conspiracy theorists on their toes, isn't it? That traction, though, the car gets thrown sideways. It's going to continue. And there's the contact initially. And there's further contact. And what else? There's a Honda coming through. Well, yeah, the Honda hit Bart. Yeah, Bart hit yeah. Bogoslowski. And it was Patrese that was the cause of all of that. So Bogoslowski. Very, very disappointed. Broken suspension, broken car. He drags it back, but he knows they're out of the race oh. at this point.